I got the email Monday afternoon on June 29th stating that a dog breeder had passed away, leaving behind a large number of unsocialized dogs. This isn't entirely unheard of, though the number of dogs, estimating from 40 to 50, was truly heartbreaking. I had a hard time forgetting about the email, and two days later I received an update that another rescue had stepped up and was going to lead the mission. The estimated number of animals had increased to 50 to 60, with some estimates as high as 90. I revisited the first email and started to make some phone calls. I know that some large-scale breeders will donate or sell their animals that they consider unadoptable to schools or shady labs, and with the sheer number of animals at this facility, it would not surprise me if this were the case. After several phone calls and emails, I discovered that yes, there were at least three separate facilities that had received dogs from there, as well as many being sold to uninformed people as wolf dogs when in fact they were simply skittish northern breed dogs living in undesirable situations. The following Friday, I met with our board president and explained the situation. I asked how he felt about my going down to assist and bring some dogs back to Kindness Ranch. We both agreed that it is a very rare opportunity to intercept dogs before they are transferred to schools or labs, and with my background in large breeds and unsocialized canines that it would be a great chance to act in kindness and help out. Tuesday, July 7th, we headed to Texas. The drive was long, the heat was unbearable, but we knew that we had to help. So, since you guys obviously know these dogs it's kind of the best right now, if we all come in there in one big group, is it, it's probably going to scatter them, or should we have a couple of people go in at a time and maybe bring one or two at a time, bring in some slug, you know, everybody stay outside, and then somebody goes in, and then we have another person come in, like one person at a time join. We arrived in Texas and met with several other amazing rescue organizations and immediately went into action trying to live trap as many dogs as we could. Not wanting to make them even more skittish or fearful of humans, we chose to bait live traps and step back. towards the gate. Yeah. Probably. If we move a bunch of people up there, they're going to freak out too. So, I'm back in the hotel room after the first day of rescue, and I'm trying to process everything that I've seen. I've, I've never seen animals in such conditions before. I, I would really like to not speak ill of the dead. But these animals, no creature deserves to live in the filth that I saw today. Um, dogs with 
broken toes and mange and hot spots and mats and standing water that was just gross and green and I can only imagine completely Giardia ridden. Um, we got one that we're definitely bringing back to the sanctuary, so I'm grateful for that. But I'm faced with one of the questions of these dogs have been obviously just hands off their entire life. They've never they've never been socialized. They've never interacted with people in any way, let alone a positive way. And I saw in their enclosures broken patio tables, literally bathroom sinks and kitchen sinks and and tires and engine parts and more empty dog food bags just laying around than you could count. Unknown number of fences that were just laying down and the dogs could literally just walk right out. The neighbors came over and started talking about all of the dogs that they had shot for being on their property. We saw maybe 20 to 25 dogs today. And there's an estimated 50 to 70 on the property. I, I can't, I can't possibly define the heat, the humidity, the stench the overall feeling of being out there. You could almost taste the death, not just of the human that passed, but the countless dogs that have probably passed and were just left. No human could walk through that property easily. The ticks, the snakes, the countless yards of braided wire and terrible chain link fencing. It was absolutely awful. The, the stress and the anxiety of just being on the property. Our staff was tense with each other. I was short tempered. The other groups that were there were short-tempered. We were, we were capturing dogs hundreds of yards off the property. And when they would turn around and go back to the property, they just walked right over the fences. It was horrifying. There was a mobile home on the property that only had blankets for doors and a two by four ramp going up it. And the dogs were finding refuge in that. I, I just took the longest shower I've had in a long time to try and get the feeling of filth off of me. And to be doing all of this in the middle of a pandemic God only knows what anybody there was exposed to. This one's gonna stay with me for a while.
good. Welcome to Kindness Ranch. 